Next, we're going to talk about closing relations, uh, which is going to involve a detour into composition of relations. Um, so before we do anything else, we're going to talk a little bit about what it means to close an object in mathematics. Um, closure is something that comes up quite a bit in mathematics. The idea is that X is some set and P is a property that X may have. Um, and then the closure of X under P is us creating the smallest set that contains X for which P holds. So the idea is we have a set X, we have another set, let's call it X star. X uh, doesn't have P, whatever the property P is, and X star has uh, the property P. Um, if X has P already, the next star is just equal to X. So the whole idea is that we're basically going to create a superset of X that has whatever property is that we want to have. Um, X star has to be unique. That's the only other thing. The idea is that we add the smallest amount of additional data to make the statement P of X true. Um, if there are different data in the same amount that we can add, then the closure does not exist, right? We can't have the situation where there's a uh, closure one and a closure two. If that happens, then those two things have to be equal or else X does not have a closure. Uh, so in this section, we're gonna talk about how to close relations under the properties of reflexiveness, symmetry, and transitivity. In practice, we may have a relation that does not have one of these properties, but due to some real life consideration, we know that it should. Then what we do is we close the relation under said property. Some of you might be worried that I'm talking about changing a mathematical object and you've never been able to do that in your entire uh, school careers. Um, but that's not what we're doing. We're not creating a new op we're not create we're not changing X. What we're doing is we're creating a new object that has all of the data that X does plus some other thing. So let's see our first closure. Uh, given a set X, this is not a closure, this is a different definition, uh, the diagonal relation on X is the relation delta, which is all of the pairs X cross X. So for example, I'm going to let X be the set ABC. In that case, the diagonal relation is the relation AA, BB, and CC. It's not hard to imagine why this is called the diagonal relation. Um, the matrix for the diagonal relation that I just wrote down is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. That's how it gets its name from. These are quote unquote the pairs on the diagonal, um, which is why you caught me using that vocabulary in one of the last videos. So let's let R be the relation AA, nope, AB. AC, BB, and CA. We can see that R is not already reflexive. Even though it contains the pair BB, it doesn't contain the pairs AA or CC. So the reflexive closure of R is the relation R union delta, which is AA, AB, AC, B, B, C, A, and C, C. Notice that we added the pairs A, A, and C, C. It was not necessary to add the pair B, B because we already had it. So that's one example. Let's take a look at the symmetric closure as well. Um, just like we needed to define the diagonal relation in order to close under reflexiveness, we're going to have to define the inverse relation to close under symmetry. So for any relation R, uh, its inverse relation is the one where I quote unquote flip all the pairs. Um, so any pair X, Y, and R is going to get turned into a pair Y, X in the inverse relation. I want you to think about the use of the word inverse here. It is similar to how it's being used as a function. Um, F inverse is the set of all pairs y x where f of x equals y. Um, what you're concerned with in algebra is making sure that this object is a function but it's always a relation and it's called the inverse relation. 
the symmetric closure is therefore R union all of the inverse pairs. So let's let X be A, B, C again. Let's let R be the relation A, B, A, C, B, B, C, A again. This time R inverse is going to be the set B, A, C, A, B, B, and A, C. So notice that R inverse is not a lot different than R because the only place that R wasn't already symmetric was this AB pair. So now we've got this BA pair. Then the symmetric closure of R is the relation R union R inverse, which is the set of pairs AB, AC, BA, BB, and CA. So this is the smallest relation that both contains the pairs from R and is also itself symmetric. Notice that when I was adding pairs to R to make it the symmetric closure, I ignored the, uh, refl the reflexive closure because I'm not trying to close under reflexiveness. So I start with R when I'm making the symmetric closure of R, not some other closure that I've already made.